Yo, how's it going? What's up, guys? Welcome to Behind the Edge with your boy Backpack B. And today we're gonna dive into the TS178 Tentera from Two Sun Knives. I'm super pumped about it. It's a very interesting knife. A collaboration between Two Sun, Tepe Design, and Night Morning. So those are three forces to be reckoned with, and I'm super pumped to talk about this one. So let's dive in. And look at that, Tucson is back at it again with an awesome collaboration between themselves, Tepe Design, and Night Morning. This is my review of the Tucson TS-178 Tentera. This knife weighs in at 5.43 ounces. It has a handle length of 5.2 inches, it has a handle width of 1.25 inches, and a handle thickness of 0.55 inches. It has a blade length of 3 inches, a blade width of 1.3 inches, and a blade thickness of 0.25 inches giving the TS-178 Tentera an overall length of 8.2 inches. It features a flat ground hawkbill blade, S90V steel, TC4 titanium handle scales, KVT ceramic ball bearing pivot system, and a one inch karambit ring. Let's take a closer look. And there she is. Check out that fine milling pattern on the show side of the handle. Moving on to the spine, you can see a long titanium backspacer that integrates seamlessly into the karambit finger ring at the end of the handle. The lock side of the knife shows off a uniquely designed titanium milled pocket clip with ceramic ball and a lock bar with a steel insert. Let's check out the centering. And that's perfect. It really is right down the center. I don't think it could be more centered than that actually. Time for my absolute favorite thing in the world, the thwack test. And that blade rockets open. The detent is perfect. The action is stellar. The fin finish of this knife is just out of control, even for Tucson. Check out the pivot hardware. I love all the subtle design elements that are present throughout this knife. The handle scales look great with that subtle milling pattern. Let's test out the action again. Wow, that is super dialed in. I can't get enough of that. Now let's check the lockup. That's looking good. Like 40 to 50% in on the tang, so good to go there. Just look at this thing, dude. The design is amazing. Let's dive into some size comparisons. I don't really have any other knives that are like the TS-178, and it's my first karambit, so I decided to compare a wide variety of folders to see how they match up. Starting with the Ken Onion Design Zero Tolerance 0350 and S30V Steel. Much different knives, but similar in length. I think they both have unique blade silhouettes as well. Next up, the SOG Termulus XR, the only knife I've really ever loved from SOG. I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't yet. And here's the Ontario Knife Company Rat Model 1 in Aus 8 Steel. This knife is a bit larger than the Tintera. Here it is next to the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I'd say they're similar in size, but the Tintera is much more of an aggressive arc. Next up, a knife that bends the other way. The Bestec Shimtar in D2 Steel, a great budget knife. Onto the Ken Onion Design Kershaw Blur, another interesting blade profile, and it has a similar length to the TS-178. And here it is next to the Buck 110 Lightweight. Two very different knives, and I just love the contrast between the two. And finally, here it is next to the Tepe Design 179 Perfecto. You can see a ton of design similarities between the two, obviously because Tepe designed both. Tepe Designs has been on fire lately. Time to move on to the pros, cons, and conclusions. Starting with the pros. There's so much to like about the TS-178 Tentera. The knife arrived in perfect condition, perfect fit and finish, perfectly centered, wrapped in plastic, and just like all two sun knives, it was covered in oil. It only took 10 days from me paying for the knife to receive the package from China, which is crazy. That's pretty fast considering the Tucson eBay seller account doesn't even charge for shipping. I love this collaboration. I personally think that Tepe and Night Morning both have been putting out some of the most interesting designs with Tucson over the past year or two. 
The steel is S90V, which is fantastic, especially when you factor in the price that I was able to pick this up for, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But so far, the S90V seems to hold a fantastic edge. It is rated as a super steel, so that's cool. The blade is aggressive, which I love. I know the karambits are used a lot for self-defense, and I can see why. Its looks alone demand respect, and that's something I love about the knife. The ergonomics are fantastic. It's obvious that a lot of thought, care, and time went into the design of these handles. And the finger choil is amazing, too. There are no hot spots. It reminds me a lot of the ergos from the TS-27. It feels so comfortable when you hold it. There are a bunch of different ways to grip this knife. It's obvious to me that the designers thought through each one of them. Its titanium milled pocket clip is fantastic. In fact, it's my favorite clip of all time, and I'm not even kidding. The design of the clip is so unique. I love the contrast of thicks and thins. The ceramic ball helps the clip from getting stuck in my pocket. I just find it very unique. It's actually one of the reasons why I picked up this knife. I thought that the design was excellent when I saw it. I can't say enough about the fit and finish of Two Sons. They are top notch, especially for the price. And the TS-178 has been the best so far out of the box. The Tentera runs on KVT ceramic ball bearing pivots, which are great. The action and detent are both dialed in. The flipper tab is amazing, and I love the jimping. The Karambit finger ring is a great size, and comfortable to hold in a variety of grips. It adds to the great fidget factor that you're able to spin the knife around with ease. I could sing the praise of this knife forever, so I'll end my pros with this. I can't believe what a deal I got on this knife. I picked it up for $85 off eBay. For the materials and the S90V steel, I just find that price so low. I would definitely value this knife at a way higher price point. Let's explore some cons, because there are a couple. This is a loud and aggressive knife, which makes it pretty hard to EDC. I would say that it's a very niche knife. I personally won't be EDCing this to the office every day because it's hard to take out in public without scaring someone. It is inherently aggressive. If that's what you're looking for in a knife, then that might be a positive, actually. I think that the weight of this knife is a con. Maybe some integration of carbon fiber could have helped out a little bit because they did a good amount of internal milling, but the knife still weighs in at 5.43 ounces. I like knives that are under 4 ounces because I find that ones that are heavier than that end up being annoying and cumbersome. One thing I think the knife could really benefit from would be a detent ball ramp to help the smoothness when closing the knife. I noticed that it hits a bit of a rough spot when closing the knife, and once the ball gets back on track it's as smooth as butter, so if there was a ramp there to help that transition, it would feel a lot smoother when closing the knife. So really nothing too bad for my cons, let's move on to my conclusions. Like I said earlier, this is a niche knife. I personally bought this knife because I wanted something different than all my other folders. The design really spoke to me from the perspective of being a work of art. That being said, I can't recommend this knife to everyone. From a functionality standpoint, this isn't a great option for EDCing every day. So if that's what you're looking for, I recommend you look elsewhere. It's a very unique blade shape that excels in certain areas and fails in others, so it's not my top recommended everyday knife. I do believe that this could be a great option for self-defense. While I'm not versed in using a blade for such things, I've always heard that a karambit is a great option for self-defense. I'd love to get some perspective from someone that uses karambits as a weapon. All that being said, if you're looking for a nice piece to add to your collection that is different than everything you have, a piece that you can admire for the craftsmanship and design, a fun knife that you could throw in your pocket when you're feeling like you want something different, then this is a great option and I highly recommend it. Thanks for sitting all the way through that. That was a lot of knife. So if you're still here, you're officially a knife addict and I salute you. Hey, if you have any recommendations for knives I could talk about in further episodes of Behind the Edge, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, consider subscribing and you won't miss any of the new videos that I post here and we can hang out on a weekly basis. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it's been fun, man. Backpack be out. Peace.